Good afternoon. Welcome to virtual CVI. My name is Ashish Prashad. I practice at Dan University Medical Center. Uh, our topic today for discussion is rotational arthrectomy, step by step. I have no disclosures relevant to this presentation. So my overview over the next eight minutes will include implications of coronary calcification, what tools we have to treat them, and then go over a step-by-step -step rotational arthrectomy um, and troubleshoot a few scenarios that you may run across. So detection and frequency of coronary calcification. Coronary calcification is seen very often. Unfortunately, there has not been a good systematic mechanism to delineate it. When uh, on angiography, the vessel has calcium on both sides and it's seen on the still frame, it's deemed to be severe. On the other hand, when the angiography demonstrates uh, calcium just on the cardiac motion and on a single site, by uh, default, it's considered to be moderate. Iris, of course, is a much better way to detect calcium. It does an excellent job of detecting the arc as well as the length of calcium. However, because Iris does not penetrate into calcium, it cannot measure the thickness or mass of calcium. On the other hand, OCT, because of its better resolution, laterally can measure the arc and the depth of calcium with uh, early data showing stent expansion is uh, favorably impacted with less uh, calcium and uh, both in terms of arc and calcium failure. So what are the implications of coronary calcification? The implications are uh, both acute and long-term outcomes are impacted. Uh, acutely, procedural complications are higher, procedural success is lower. It creates challenges in stent delivery, and expansion, increases the incidence of edge dissections, and in general increases very procedural complications. Long term, it does increase the rate of target vessel failure. This was a nice uh, expansion in calcified lesion study that looks at uh, on the y-axis stent expansion at 16 atmospheres, which is a reasonable size inflation pressure. And on the x-axis has the degree of calcification. And as you can see, it's a pretty linear relationship. Higher the calcium, less of the expansion with a pretty high correlation coefficient and a p-value that is significant. We add in atherectomy as a treatment for this high degree of calcification. And you notice that stent expansion numbers are a lot higher once uh, black modification is accomplished with the patient atherectomy is seen on the red bars uh, on the right slide. This was ADAPT TS data with more than 8,500 patients with clear outcomes, suggesting that when calcification is present, um, the clear outcomes of target vessel failure rates are four percentage points higher than in the absence of coronary calcium. This is my algorithm that I think is worth paying attention and looking at. There are certain bullet points that I want to highlight. Bottom line is, you want to have an optimal stent outcome for which you need optimal balloon expansion. In circumstances where the balloon crosses the lesion after you've crossed the lesion with a the wire, then pre rotation with a small balloon followed by imaging is the right way to go. If the imaging demonstrates significant calcium, as defined as an arc of greater than 180, length greater than 5 millimeters, or a thickness of greater than 5.5 millimeters, then uh, we typically will need some form of modification of this plaque. If the calcium is superficial, then rotational and orbital atherectomy are the preferred modalities. And if the calcium is deep, then lithoplasty is your mode of choice. On the other hand, if the calcification is not as extensive, then a scoring balloon or a non-compliant balloon to ensure optimal balloon expansion should be the strategy. If after a non-compliant balloon, optimal expansion is not obtained, then moving to a lithoplastic balloon or even atherectomy at that point is a reasonable game plan. On the other hand, if your lesion is not balloon crossable, then you use a microcatheter. If the lesion can be crossed with a microcatheter, then usually the rotofloppy wire or the viper wire is switched out and then atherectomy performed, after which balloon expansion is most often optimal. On the other hand, if uh, a microcatheter cannot cross, then 
other modalities of modification, namely laser or potentially direct wiring with a rotor wire or a viper wire, should be entertained uh, to allow for adequate balloon expansion, followed by image guided stenting modification. In the rare instance that even after our threat image, the stent is suboptimally expanded and using super high pressure balloons. Currently unavailable in the United States, but up to 40 atmospheres, or even contemplating using the lithoplastic balloon, which is also currently unavailable in the US, but in clinical trials for optimizing stent outcome. This is a slide that compares and contrasts traditional with contemporary atherectomy. We used to use uh, femoral access and an eight branch guide routinely for all atherectomy. That's now changed most commonly Radial access is preferred. You could use a two millimeter burr or a seven point sheet in the right radio library and perform atherectomy in the majority of cases. Guiding catheter is needed to be large and usually ejecting catheters are used, but now single curve catheters with good support like an EDU or an AL can be easily used. The goal here is stable catheter position for the procedure rather than deep intubation and a lot of support. Guide wires, uh, guide wires haven't changed. They traditionally, we use a rotor floppy wire or an extra support rotor wire. This is a stainless steel wire with uh, uh, a taper of 0 0.0009 inch. Uh, it's a wire that's difficult to use. Uh, most of the time, uh, I would recommend switching, uh, using workhorse wire across the region, using a micropather and then switching up for a rotor wire or a micro wire. Uh, that's the current mode that most operators would uh, use in temporary, rather than trying to wire the lesion with a rotor wire. Burr size, our uh, approach has changed. We no longer aim to debulk. Our goal is to obtain a burr wire duration of 0.5, usually starting with a burr of 1.5 millimeter caliber as initial strategy, with a step up approach as needed. Ablation speeds have come down. Traditionally, from 180 to now 160 to 170,000 RPMs. The idea being uh, less generation of heat, less uh, platelet aggregation, and hence less slow flow. Temporary pacemaker was always used for dominant right coronaries and left vein PCIs in the past, but however, using smaller burrs at lower speeds, the incidence of heart block has decreased. Uh, we could use atrophy to pre treat if heart block is suspected or use aminophilin or sometimes use the PESA wire uh, and the rotor wire as the pacing wire for uh, a need for urgent pacing uh, in a crisis. The rotor ablation flush cocktail hasn't changed. We use some form of vasodilator nitrates and heparin, uh, ideally to combat spasm and no reflow. And uh, often uh, this is uh, used to flush uh, through the rotor system. Uh, this is a case-based learning example. You want to start with a uh, good orthogonal view of both lesions. This is a distal left main calcified lesion, a, a Dyna 111, as uh, illustrated in both the AP column and AP cranial projection. Uh, this illustrates uh, a stepwise blur with a planned target burr to RD ratio of 0.5. The 1.5 millimeter burr is used in the left panel and the 2 millimeter burr is used on the right panel, uh, given that the left main would at least have been 4 millimeters in the diameter. Rotational atherectomy is typically performed uh, over a single wire, but in case you do need to protect the side branch, there are some clever techniques to do that. One way is to uh, use a guide extension catheter or which rotational atherectomy can be performed, protecting the side branch from access to, with the burr. Another way to handle the situation would be to have a microcatheter over the wire that needs to be protected. And most often a fine cross can be safely used. Rotational atherectomy can be performed over the other wire in the vessel that needs to be treated uh, without uh, losing wire position in the other branch. In this instance, 
he chose to not protect the LED uh, and after rectangle was performed in the circumflex uh, independent of uh, needing a wire in the LED because uh, the access to the LED was not thought to be a challenge. After completion of that rectangle, uh, of course, you still need to know uh, PCI, and in this case, uh, DK crush technique is used to treat the bifurcation with excellent results, as shown in the panel on the right. A couple of situations that you might run into, one of those is when a burr gets trapped or a stuck burr. Uh, my advice is the amount of prevention is better than a pound of cure. Good initial technique, it's slow packing. Avoiding a 1.25 millimeter burr because that has a fusiform shape versus an olive shape. Uh, the setup for a stock bar is uh, a situation that requires stent ablation, especially uh, when you try to stent ablate at uh, the low uh, ablation speeds that you treat the uh, novo plant. Uh, the burr typically will get stuck in those situations, and uh, the solution there is uh, to use a smaller burr and uh, ablate at uh, high speeds. Uh, of course, the risk of no repo is higher when you do this, but it prevents the bird from uh, getting stuck in the step. When that happens, uh, solution number one is to carefully pull and push the shaft of the rotoblader device, followed by deep guide intubation and a more aggressive pull. Very rarely, uh, you might need a ping pong guide, a second wire with a small balloon adjacent to the rotoblader bar, and even more rare, uh, is the need for training the patients. Take home message atherectomy simplifies complex PCI. Most often, less contrast and less radiation is needed when used up front. This uh, leads to a more efficient procedure, allows for full stent expansion, less edge dissection, it allows for placement of longer stents, and hence, use of less stents per case. Long term implications on TLR and TDF are, however, attractive but not proven. Thank you for your attention.